Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about what works versus what doesn't. So if you've been in business for a long time, or heck, you're just starting up, make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is going on? Thanks for hanging out with us. If it's your first time, have a look around. I hope you like it. Hopefully it's better than a cat video. Uh, but more importantly, hopefully you binge all of the episodes. Because there's some good content. There's some sucky content too. But, but who's choosing? we got over 200 episodes. We've been doing this for over 200 straight weeks. Every single week comes out on Friday. So make sure to check that out. If you are one of the cool kids, sticker right there. Thank you. A cool kid is somebody who watches every episode. If you're on YouTube, you've thumbs up the video. If you haven't yet, do it. It's a click. It's literally a click. Click it, click it, click it. And you've commented. Make sure to comment. Uh, that helps algorithms and whatever other things I don't understand that exist with it. Make sure you do all that. And more importantly, buy all of your supplies through me, which is my shameless plug. I am a rep for windowcleaner.com, the most bestest, greatest window cleaning supply company in all of the world so please do buy from me truly i want to be your rep my number is 862-312-2026 that's my cell phone so text me be like yo jersey everything's in my cart pull the trigger i'll verify an address put it in it costs you nothing extra and you you know feel like you've helped someone out you've helped me out that's how i make my cheddar so anyway thank you by the way very much for all of you awesome awesome people by the way, there's so many of you who buy every single order through me. That is absolutely amazing. It's what I do. So little orders, big orders, it doesn't matter, but thank you. And uh, shameless plug number two, if you haven't yet gotten your copy of the American Window Cleaner magazine, yes, an actual printed copy of a magazine. Yes, they still do that. Got another one here. Anyway, get it. It's absolutely awesome, uh, if I don't say so myself. And... If you haven't checked it out yet, inside, not only are there a ton of articles, there's new products, there's reviews, there's just tons of pictures. I mean, look at look at the picture. That's Frank Grave, by the way. But uh, there's so much good stuff in the magazine. Make sure to get your hands on it. Just check that out, awcmag.com. Uh, play this in the background and go get a subscription. Do it. Please. Please. Uh, no, you'll really, really like it. Anyway. All right, so today we're actually talking about what works and what doesn't. Now, there are certain people out there who tell you what works and what doesn't, and here's the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is what works for Joe Smith doesn't work for you, and vice versa. It doesn't always work across the plat, you know, different areas. But 99% of the stuff does. I get a lot, a lot. I bet you probably, you know, daily. Somebody says the phrase, well, in my area or my customers, they, and it's always about how different their customers are, how different their area is, how, you know, how it's just, it's not like any other one. This is absolutely so different. And they're, it's lies. You do not have different customers yes they might be slightly different as far as like a more affluent area or a cheaper area or a poor area versus a wealthy area uh but a customer is a customer and the same buying triggers work it's psychology it is not because your customers are different it's the same thing when um i've had people who tell me they go oh yeah i can't use water fed where i am it's just my windows are so different bull bull loney i will show you every single state Hundreds, if not thousands of cleaners that are using water fed. So it's not you. It's not your customers. They're not different. I'm sorry to tell you. But with that being said, some things work. I mean, one of the things we're going to talk about is something that I've had people who sent me a message be like, dude, I do that and it works awesome. And uh, it's been one person that's told me that. So maybe it's going to work. But either way, you can't have a area... Uh, or a business and not have kind of the same type of stuff out there. So there's a lot of things that do work and a lot of things that don't work. And that's what we're talking about. 
That's what we're talking about. So, by the way, I'm just some dude who sits in his office with this super fancy screwed on. By the way, I just realized you can like see the screws where it holds up. It's not fancy. I'm not fancy. I'm a nobody. But these are my thoughts, at least, right? First off, a thing that does work is EDDM. Now, a lot of you, any one of you who are out there and said, oh, it didn't work for me. It doesn't work. EDDM doesn't work. It's garbage. You did it wrong. EDDM only works when it's done right. And the big thing with EDDM is it can be done wrong and be super expensive when you jack it up. I had somebody, and I tell this story all the time, but he took his last like $3,500. He had like $200 left in his bank account and put it all in the winter in EDDM and did one mailing to each house. And he's like, ah, gone. Right? That's a bummer because you did it wrong. Now, EDDM, there's some really, really, really specific things that go on. First off, the piece has to be awesome. An EDDM piece cannot be something you put together in Microsoft Paint and you think it's super awesome because you're proud of your creation. It's not, not what can happen. You have to have something split tested to get to that point. If you haven't, get a template. Uh, WCR, windowcleaner.com, window cleaning resource. We have templates. Use a template. But either way, make sure that the, the, the image is good, eye-catchy, and tells a story without overtelling a story. An EDDM piece is just for them to find you and look for more information. That is not to tell them every service you offer. It is not to give a book. No one is reading a postcard, no matter how big it is, of all the services in your history. and That's for your website to do. But it needs to be eye-catchy and get people to call you, pick up the phone, right? That is what EDDM does. How to do EDDM, you have to send each piece to everybody three times. If you don't, you're not good. If you just take an EDDM, you buy a thousand pieces, you send it out, and you sit back and go, well, all right. We're going to have awesome. It's not, it's not going to be awesome. It's not awesome. So you have to, have to, do it multiple times. And the big thing is three. I like three. Three works really, really well. But what it is is if you're going to take $1,000 and send out EDDM, instead send out $333 to each person. I'm going to send somebody a mailer now. I'm going to send them the same mailer next week. And I'm going to send them that same mailer the third week. Your ROI keeps going up. If you do it wrong, it seems like it doesn't work. But it's because it was done wrong, not because the program doesn't work. So EDDM works. I promise you EDDM works. Now, there's two big things between EDDM and, say, flyering. You either have more time than money or more money than time, right? And if you're watching this when this is coming out, we're uh, end of April, yeah, beginning of May. We're busy. A lot of us have more money than we have time. And when you're busy, you have to advertise, so now would be the time to do EDDM. If you're sitting around middle of summer, you're not going to have a huge return rate regardless because of the time of year. But go do handout flyers. Save some postage on it by doing it yourself because now you got more time than you have money, right? Those are the big ones. The first don't or thing that I don't think works, not worth even trying, is not wanting to bug your customers. I get this all the time where people... You know, say, but oh, are you doing a, a spring and fall call list? No. Are you doing like postcards? No. Emails? No, 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 no. We don't really want to bug our customers. What? That's not bugging your customers. Any business that you know of has commercials. They are reminding you at all times they exist. Let's go to Coca Cola. Coca-Cola is always sending you messages and ads and posters and magazines. They're always telling you, hey, Coca-Cola, remember us? Drink it. Ah, so refreshing, right? Look at how cold this cup is. It's so cold and it's hot out that there's moisture. Look at all the condensation on this bottle. They're telling you, remember us? McDonald's. Everybody who can speak in this nation knows what a McDonald's is, even if you don't eat there or if you do eat there. But yet McDonald's advertises everywhere. Everywhere. They have signs at every one of their locations. They're not bugging people. 
When they're sending coupons in the mail, it's to get people to come in. When they're doing ads, it's not bugging people. Nobody's ever gotten a, a, a flyer from a McDonald's or Hardee's or Wendy's, whatever the fast food places are. You get this coupon in the mail, and you go, oh my gosh, would you stop bugging me? I'm not going back there because they bug me too much. No, you're running a business. You're running a business. So with a business, you have to remind people you're there. So anybody who tells me, uh, my customers, they just come back. They just, I do quality work and they come back. Listen, that is potentially true. Some people come back, but you're leaving it up to them. It's just ignorant to think. And uh, by the way, I'm sorry that I'm heated, but I got in a conversation yesterday by one of the more well-known internet trolls, if you will. And I respect them. I respect you because I know you're watching. But there are certain things that are said that doesn't make sense. And this is one of them. I don't want to bug my customers. I don't put it out there. Um, I've had this actually a lot of people say that. And it's not bugging them. It's keeping yourself relevant. Now, here's the thing. I would always, 1,000%, want to control everything in my business, right? Now, I know a lot of you go, well, you can't control everything. Absolutely right. But... If you do not call anybody, you do not follow up, you do not send them postcards, emails, uh, you're not EDDMing them, you're not sending them things and stuffing envelopes and calling them. If you're not doing that, you're saying, hey, uh, Jane Smith, my customer, I hope next year or the year after or whenever your windows get so dirty you actually remember to call me that you remember I just happen to be the company you called because I know a lot of you are like me and you don't just keep invoices. They don't really remember you like you think they do. I was told, well, if you do great work, they'll always call you back. Lies. That's wrong. They will not always call you back. It will not always be on them because they'll forget. They'll call somebody else who they thought were you. Uh, They will take two years to call you back. There's so many things that come in. So taking as much as you can out. Referrals are amazing, by the way. Don't ever get me wrong that I'm saying referrals are bad because referrals are awesome. They're free. They're trustworthy. It's super easy. You already got everything. Referrals are amazing and it's king. But why not get those up? Not even referrals, sorry. Uh, Repeat customers, right? Why not get your repeats up? If you start contacting them, sending them emails, calling them, our call list, we do twice a year in my window cleaning company. That I sold and do not have anymore. (laughs) We do it twice a year, spring and fall, and you just call and say, hey, Mrs. Jones, just calling to let you know we're putting together our spring schedule, and I didn't see you on there. I just wanted to know uh, what day a week works best for you. Every single time, I've had one person in 10 years, probably longer, that we've been doing that, probably longer, 12 years, that said, hey, what are you calling me for? Take my number off your list, and they hung up. I went, oh, okay, crap, okay. I got a call right back, and they said, is this... XYZ window cleaning? I said, yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And you knew my name. Said, Jersey, I, I didn't even know. I thought you were just selling me something. I can't believe that. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's been one of those days. Uh, let's go ahead and book it. One person has ever told me, I don't want you calling me like this. And then they just called back and went, oh, I didn't know who you were. Every other person, sometimes they're like, oh, you know what? We're going to wait till fall. Okay, great. Well, if there's anything we can do for you, or if you want to get in the summer, we can actually save you a couple bucks by booking it in the summer instead of fall. Fall's being our busy time, like spring, we can book you in the middle of the summer and take 10% off. Whatever your ploy is or whatever your ad, your, your, your sales pitch is. But if you do that, Almost everybody, everybody who books, go, oh my gosh, thanks for calling. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, uh, how about Tuesdays? You got Tuesdays, maybe something in like uh, two weeks. Yeah, absolutely. I got the 15th available. Does that work for you? Yeah, it does. How about nine, between nine and 10 a.m.? Absolutely. Great. Booked. Thanks for letting me know, man. I would have forgotten. Hey, it's, it's your job to, to live your life and it's my job to remember your windows. And they go, ha ha ha. And I go, ha ha ha. And they hang up and I call the next one. I'm reminding people to have the service. If they hired you, they want you. If they've used you in the past and you think you're as awesome as you are, call them. Call them. Why are you out there looking for new work all the time when you can just call and follow up? So one of the things that makes me mad, and I'm, I'm heated, I'm sorry, but it's I don't want to bug my customers. Another one that does work is vehicle wraps. Again, it has to be done right. A vehicle wrap 
or any lettering for that matter. I like wraps a lot better because you can do a better message and you can eye catch, you know, be eye catchy. If you put everything on and your vehicle wrap looks like this, eh, no one's gonna, no one's gonna, you may get one or two people a year that are like, oh, it's window cleaning, right? But I've seen some amazing wraps. You guys have some really, really, really clever stuff out there and I love a good wrap. Eye catchy has got some color in it. But the big letters across the entire vehicle say window cleaning, phone number, uh, website, and then maybe some seals for uh, what kind of bonding you are, or, you know, your insurance or your associations or something like that. Man, make it eye catchy. The biggest words I want people to see. Have you ever seen that thing, by the way? They have it like a Reddit posts it sometimes, but uh, big words, and it says, you will read this first, and then the next one is a size smaller, and it says, you'll read this second, and blah, blah, and your eyes actually read all of these things, and you're finding them on the page. It's the bigger text is always the first, so make window cleaning biggest, because that's what you want people to do. A vehicle wrap will always pay for itself a hundred times over, and it's there for years, years. Every time you park your vehicle, you could be parked at, at, at Goodwill, <laughs> You could be parked at uh, Macy's. You could be parked anywhere, and people will see that vehicle. You could be driving down the road. People see the vehicle. You could be at neighbors' houses, and the neighbors all see it. A wrap is always, always awesome. If you just have a little graphic, that works, but a wrap is always better. And people go, I can't spend $3,000. Could you give me $3,000 if I said it would give you $30,000? Because if the answer is yes, then get a wrap. Get a wrap. Wraps work. Do it right, though. Don't clutter it. Make it easy and uh, let people see what they can see. Something that doesn't work uh, is no lettering. It's no logoed shirts. It's uh, no branding whatsoever. Now, here's the truth of the matter, and all of us, this is one of those kind of kick you below the belt things, but our branding does not matter as much as we say it matters to our customers, it matters more to us, right? I want a brand I'm proud of. I want something you look at and be like, yeah, looks good, right? Looks professional. But the real the real issue, if you will, is that it has to look, it has to look professional and give off the image you're trying to put out there. If you show up to a job, there is no uniform, your techs show up in an unmarked van, they're, they're expecting to not have to pay so much. They're expecting to not have uh, a higher-end crew. If you want to be high-end, make your logo high-end. Put it all out there, right? Spend some time on that. Don't have your logo just be Steve's window cleaning and Comic Sans or something. like That just doesn't put out the image that maybe you're looking for. And I know a lot of us that are listening, you have companies to where they want to be and you're not looking to get any more work, which I totally understand. That's up to you. But it's still something to represent your company in the light that you want to be seen in, right? There are buying colors. There are uh, emotion colors. There are all that stuff that all goes into it. This is why when companies go and do a brand and they build a logo, logos are worth tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in development. It has to be right. So don't tell me that no lettering. Ah, You know what? My customers don't want a big ad in their driveway. Ugh. So you're telling me that every heating company they have, they rather them show up in a white van. You're telling me that when they get a pizza delivered, it doesn't have the thing on top of it. You're telling me that nobody ever advertises anywhere by their house. It's malarkey. So don't tell me that it doesn't work. It works absolutely awesome. And another thing, you have to have nice logoed gear. By the way, I have the 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 go ahead make my day squeegee shirt on. It's available at awcmag.com. <laughs> shameless plug number two or three i don't know but uh have a shirt on that shows them that you care enough to have a clean nice shirt logoed you have respect get that that logo that you just spent so much money and time on developing put it on your, everything logo everything people really even if they don't say so it translates as a professional company um Something that does work is a call list. And I know I talked about this, but I want to go a little bit more in depth. I bring it up every time this year and I get a lot of pushback and a lot of not. When I do a call list, I pull every single customer. And 
again, this is uh, time consuming. So if you have office staff, you know, they can be doing this. But I pull a list of everybody who is in the next two months. I get their list by name and I weed them off that list. So I print out every customer we've ever dealt with and their phone number. And we take off of that list the ones that are already scheduled on the the, the schedule. Basically, I call... Uh, Oregon office staff has that, uh, you know, even if you hire people, just tempt people say, Hey, I want to pay you for 48 hours a week. Just call people on our list and schedule stuff. Maybe you can find somebody like that, but I just call, Hey, it's Jersey from XYZ window cleaning. Uh, just putting together our spot, uh, spring, not fall spring schedule. And I didn't see you on that. Um, is there a day a week that works best for you? Or uh, what were your thoughts? Or I wanted to remind you to get your appointment in and I can set one with you right now on the phone. Or, hey, I hope last time we were there, everything looked awesome. Um, We're putting together our spring schedule and I'd love to get you on. Uh, What day a week do you prefer? Or when do you got available? Uh, Is next week better? Or uh, we're putting together our schedule. I'd love to get you in the month of May. Uh, Do you have any available time? All of those things. All you're doing is you're not saying, hey, call me when you get a chance. If I leave a message, that's what I'm saying. I'll, I'll, I'll follow back up with you in a couple of days, but give me a call either way. Let me know. But the big thing is that you want to have people schedule something with you right there. If you call and say, hey, it's Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning Company. I just wanted to let you know that uh, we're putting together a spring schedule. Just let me know if you need anything. They go, okay. Click. You just put it, you just spend time to take out the chance for them to have everything uh, in their uh, control and you just gave it back to them. Take control. That's what this is about is leading the conversation where you want it to go. Literally, we're not being pushy here. If you say, hey, I'd love to get you in and blah, blah, you do a whole spiel and they go, you know what? No, actually, we're going to wait. Oh, perfect. Uh, like fall time or do you want to wait a whole calendar 12 months? Uh, I think fall will probably do something. Okay, cool. Hey, either way, enjoy your summer. I'll get you a call back sometime in fall. But if you need anything before that, you know my number. Uh, just let me know. Oh, absolutely. Thanks again. That's it. Once they say, hey, I'm putting it off something else, we're not being pushy. This is where a lot of the people who say that my customers don't want them to bug them, you're not bugging them. You're just trying to remind them. Call us is super, super valuable. If you're not doing it, it is just that simple. If you're using QuickBooks, it's a click of a button. Export it to a C uh, spreadsheet. C, oh my gosh, CVX, CSV, CSV file. I'm trying to see it in my head. But then uh, take the list, take out the names. It's so, so, so simple. It's a call. You will increase. You will fill your calendar if you're doing this. If you haven't done it yet, comment down below on YouTube and uh, let me know when you do do it. And uh, if you want to send me, you know, some beef jerky as a thank you for uh, filling your calendar for you, you're welcome. Um, But um, yeah, do call us. I can't stress that enough. But something else that doesn't work is billboards. Now, I have had one person in all my life tell me billboards billboards worked. If you did a billboard comment on YouTube again, let me know what you ended up paying for the billboard and what you actually got out of the billboard. Because most people, it doesn't actually equate to a great ROI. And the reason is, is as you're driving, something has to catch your, your eye, and then what are you going to tell them? You're going to tell them your website or you're going to tell them your name? Most websites are, you know, John's window cleaning in SpokaneWashington.com. Well, no one's reading all that. And then much more or less, no one is going to go home, remember that, and put it in there. Now, we have a short one in America Window Cleaner Magazine. It's AWC Mag, AWCMAG.com. Six letters. Super quick. But if you don't know the name of the magazine, it's going to be harder to find that, even if I tell you what it is right now. In fact, I tell that in every episode about awcmag.com and people don't go there. Uh, Not as much as people actually listen. So it's one of those things that has to translate. The thing that works on billboards is a big picture zoomed in of a juicy cheeseburger that looks 10 times better than you know you'll ever get from McDonald's, but it's up there on the billboard with a big golden M. If you don't think billboards work at all, that's wrong. 
that cheeseburger for probably two blocks of the day for four hours a day, totaling eight hours, four blocks around lunch, four blocks around um, dinner. People looking like, ah, yeah, yeah, I'm going to snag a cheeseburger. But if you have all this stuff, and I've seen billboards, they're so bad. Sometimes people will put, you know, um, Steve's window washing and power washing. We specialize. And then there's bullet points and a bunch of stuff with, like, motion in the background. Then they have their, their phone number and name. And it's like, who do you think is looking at this thing? Do you think cars are pulling up to go, no. Cars are going fast. Faster the road, the billboards are on. Slower roads do not usually have billboards, right? Billboards are a don't. If you haven't tried them, don't. But if you have tried them, tell me how much you spent down in the comments on YouTube, please. I want to know. Something that does work, and this is the absolute number one, ultimate, best, anything you can do for your company. Now, everybody always says, when I say this, they go, what about referrals? Well, you always have like 50% of your business come from referrals. That's awesome, but it's not something that you do. You can actively get referrals, but I'm saying about active advertising. The best active advertising you can ever do to get new customers is a website. And it is not a junky website you put together and you think it looks pretty all right. Even if you think it looks amazing, does it really look amazing? Do you have heat maps to see where people are actually clicking and where they're looking? The big thing with websites is you have to have one that looks and functions really, 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 really well. The big thing with them is people have to find them. If they don't find a website, it doesn't matter how nice the website is, right? It's like you have a um, an awesome um, restaurant. It is the greatest restaurant ever. The food is the best thing that has ever touched your lips. And it is in a back alley with no sign. Yeah, you'll have some people who find it, but it's better if you have that in the front where people can find it. Websites are always, always, always going to sell. It's like having a brochure about your company, having pictures, and have a response a bit on there. Put it on there so that people can go and find and price and do all of that. Put it all on there so they can do everything there. You can send people to that. You can advertise that. You can put that on all of your paperwork. Having a good website is absolutely key to being successful. And if you are spending a few thousand dollars on a website, people go, oh man, I can't spend $5,000 on a website. Yes, you can, because that $5,000 turns into $100,000 in the next two years, right? It is so absolutely valuable. Websites work every time for absolutely everybody. If I find a company personally and they don't have a website, or their website looks horrible, I'm not going to, they don't care about their company. I'm not going to hire them because they're not going to care about the job, right? And lastly, the thing that does not work is not doing SEO. Now, I know it's a stretch. It should be in the things you do is SEO, but here's the thing. I know people who get to the first page of Google and they go, oh, I don't have a lot of competition in there, so I don't even have to do anything. Uh, what? What? Uh, SEO is a revolving and rotating and almost daily or minute rotations of what is being put up, what is seeing, what the crawlers are doing. You may have an awesome website, front page of Google. That is super awesome. A year from now, it's not on Google anymore. It's like in page three. And you're like, what the heck? I was for It's not an end all. You have to do SEO all the time. People who say, I don't need to do SEO are missing out on a huge, 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 huge boost. Again, they have to find your awesome website. New people have to find it. People have to search something like window washer and get to your website. People have to find something like dirty windows and get to your web. People have to get find, uh, type in uh, how to clean your own windows and pull up your website. That's SEO. SEO is the finding of your website. It has to be done. If you have an awesome website and you're not doing SEO, you're missing out on all of that. If you type in XYZ window cleaning in Rochester, New York, and you pull up first, well, first off, you probably aren't in an incognito view. So you're looking at your own, uh, your search and browser knows what you've looked and will pop those up going in incognito view. 
But second off, if you're so specific, you may term real well on that one term, but you're not ranking really well on all the other terms. SEO is so stinking important. Make sure you do it. But there you go. I'm going to hop off my high horse for the day. I'm sorry. I'm so heated. But thanks for listening. If you've made it this far, thanks for being a cool kid. By the way, the new sticker is out. If you haven't gotten a new uh, cool kid, it's like a hologram. It's pretty sweet. Let me know. I'll put your order in 862-312-2026. Shoot me a text. Be like, yo. And uh, remind me about a sticker. Like, throw a sticker in, bro. And I will throw a sticker in, bro. Um, Let me know that. If you haven't yet, uh, do me the biggest favor. Uh, Go to the American Window Cleaner Magazine and get a subscription. It's mailed to your door every single uh, month. And it comes with the awesome sticker sheet every single month. So go do that. I really, uh, I would love to have like 5,000 subscribers to that magazine by the end of uh, next year. So um, please, please do, do that. awcmag.com forward slash sub. Either way, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. However you do it, uh, thanks for everything. And uh, until next week, go out there and be epic.